Hey guys, this is gonna be a different video today. Not a vlog, not a review. What is it? A tutorial. It's a sewing tutorial today, guys. So you all know I've been making this top over and over again because I learned from Comic Cat Creations. I keep sending you guys over there, but if you guys don't go, take a look. This is my top. Yeah, y'all like it? See? This one I wouldn't wear a belt with it because it's kind of short, but I made it this way so I could put like a pencil skirt. I love these tops because they're flattering to me because I think these are like my best parts. Um, imagine what you can do with these sleeves. You can make them longer, wider. You could cut out a piece here and put lace maybe. You could cut out something here and put lace if you want to show more of your body. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with this little simple top. Uh, the only thing, the only negative about this top is that you can't pull it up like this to wear it on the shoulder. It's just strictly off the shoulder. I've tried, okay? So look, I sew this all by hand. This is couture. This is all hand sewn with a needle and thread. Joshua saw me do it. Joshua's running camera. Cut my sleeves. I had this fabric. It was only enough for the bodice. I had some left over for the sleeve. I went and bought another half yard to do the next sleeve. And so I have a two-toned shirt that I absolutely adore. I love the eyelets. I love everything about this, especially that I hand sewed it, all right? So I want to show you how we make these blouses. Take a look here at my template. Oh, where did I put my scissors just now that I grabbed? Hang on, guys. Okay guys, so I'm going to open this shirt afterwards and show you what it looks like. But for right now, I folded it where I tucked the sleeves in so you can see this curve. And this is the, um, the neck part, of course, but we're going to do an off the shoulder. So we want to fold it halfway down the armhole. And then you want to move it up a little bit because this is going to be the top that you're going to fold like right here to do the elastic. You, uh, this shirt is stretchy. This material is cotton or calico, or whatever they call it, so it doesn't have any stretch at all to it. So you're gonna to wanna to cut it a little bit wider. So I'm cutting it on some wax paper just to show you, you know, a template, because I don't wanna mess up one of my other fabric that I have. So put it like inch and a half, two inches away from the fold. So you would have material that you would fold like this, right? And then you wanna start cutting the bottom as long as you want it. So if this is too short for you, you know, cut it longer. So I'm gonna cut this one all the way here. Let me move this pin. I couldn't tape up this wax paper because the tape wouldn't stick. I didn't realize that. It's not wax paper, parchment paper, I'm sorry. So you can use newspaper, tape it together. You can use printer paper, just tape it together. And I'm cutting this one super long, but honestly, if you like the length of your shirt, just give it like a half inch for seam allowance for you to sew, all right? Thank you for the dynamic angle, Josh. So then you wanna go wide out here, so I'm not gonna cut any of this. But if you had fabric, you would cut it. And then you want to go into the curve, maybe like two inches, right? To make the curve of the armhole. Oh, the other one's not getting cut. And I'm not good at cutting. You guys should know this, that I'm not really good at cutting. But I did not let it stop me from trying, and I'm glad, because now I can make these shirts. She has another tutorial, Monica from Comic Cat Creations, where she's making that peasant boho, or soho, whatever type top where it's not off the shoulder here, it's under the armpits, and then you have the sleeve there, so there's more of you showing. I don't think I like that for me, not me in my old age. That's for a young girl, I think, for like Jada's age. And look how big this thing look, right? So this is your template. And you'll be able to use this template over and over again to make these tops. So I would cut it out of a fabric or paper that's not falling apart because um, you, I promise you, you're gonna wanna make more after you make this one because you're gonna see how simple it is. So that's the body part of the template. So let me show you what I did with the shirt. I just pinned it together to hold it together, right? And this is a shirt that fits me well. It's stretchy. And see the sleeves? I just folded it in to get the curvature here. So now what we wanna do is make a sleeve pattern. Let me get this out of the way. Some more parchment paper. You can use tracing paper for this, but I don't have none. I went to Josh when I said, can I, do you have tracing paper? Because he draws, right? He goes, how insulting, mother. I draw, I don't trace. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Plus, I'm mostly uh, digital only, so. Yeah. Uh. So, or, you, know, you know what kind of paper you can use to the one that you put in the gift bags? The lighter ones, you can see through? Because we want to see through so we can draw this sleeve, all right? So here we go. Grab you a Sharpie or a pen, see? It's kind of hard to see through this. We're gonna have to feel. Somebody came in right now, but that's okay. Somebody's at the door. 
Somebody's at the door? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's money. Money, come to me now. So you want to get your, your paper right here and hold it. This is the seam side, all right? Something got delivered, baby? <laughs> right in the middle of our tutorial, somebody comes to the door, right? So what you can do with this, you can have this paper longer, right? And you can make the, the sleeves as long as you want, but I want my sleeves to be right here at my elbow. So let's move this up. And we're gonna have to really struggle. That's why I say tracing paper. Struggle to feel where this this is going. Where the seam is? Yeah. I'm feeling for it, guys. Feeling for it. I think we're getting there. So you see why tracing paper would help the situation, right? I think that's about it. This is just a rough thing for you guys to see anyways, all right? So now, remember this shirt doesn't have any give to it. So that's just what it is. You're gonna have to have seam allowance for the thingy. So you wanna take your tape measure and you measure it like an inch. I'm doing it rough because you already know I have my template that I'll show you guys. Okay? So that's where you're gonna cut it. Don't use fabric cutting scissors to cut paper, all right? Because you'll mess them up. Cut it with your same allowance. And let's see if we have the right thing. So this is for a standard sleeve. For the off the shoulder sleeve, we're gonna have to do something else to it. What you can actually do too, guys, for like your standard sleeve, if you have a shirt like this that's done, rather than throw it away or give it away, Cut the sleeve open, take it off, and save this as your sleeve template. Nobody says you can't do that. I want to start making some shirts like this for the winter. And what I'm going to do is cut this low and put like a cage, like a crisscross thing, to just show off here. And those are going to be my winter tops, because these are my summer tops, right? So this is the off-the-shoulder thing that I have. Let's see how it fits. So this is the... um down here by your arm. This is up here where it goes in the, um, to join the body. So what you have to do to make that, to get it, to cut this piece off, let me grab my, my um, thing that I cut out and show you. All right, so remember this is this part down here, all right? So up here where we have that curvature, you wanna take your bodice template that you already cut out and you go right around here follow along along the curve this doesn't have a thing and then you draw a straight line and you cut off that piece that's the off the shoulder thing all right and then you name this you name this that this is the fold so you don't forget you name that it's off the shoulder And you put the date, today's 9-19. I put the date because I keep losing weight and I'm gonna have to take this in as we go along. So that's your template. The other one's on the table. Put that aside and then you can cut out your top, right? Oh, wait, 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 I don't wanna get nothing on my material. So this is my template for my off the shoulder, see? The last day that I changed it was 8-23 because I lost so much weight that the thing was getting bigger. And this is what I put on the fabric in order to um, cut out my sleeve. So let me show you how you're gonna use your template to cut your fabric. So buy at least two yards of the fabric. If you're, um, if you wear like a bigger size, 18, 20, 22 or stuff, buy three yards just to play it safe. So this fabric doesn't have any stretch. So pick the direction that you want the, the thing to go. So for this one, I could have picked this way for the stripes, but I know that if you're heavy, stripes that run this way make you look heavier. You want to do it this way, horizontal, not vertical. At least that's my little tip to y'all. So you can do this. You can either fold the fabric and fold your bodice, or you could just open up your bodice like this. Ooh, is it sticking out? Remember, you're gonna have a better one than, than this, right? Because this wax paper is kind of falling apart on it, not wax paper. And just set it on there, pin it, and cut around and cut two pieces out, whatever part of the pattern you want to cut it. 
Make sure that you're not wasting fabric well and so on and so on. So now if you don't want to open it up like that, you can fold it like this. Everything's falling apart. Then you take your fabric. The reason I'm not cutting this guys is because I already cut my top out of this and I want to try and use this to make an apron or something maybe. Fold the fabric like that when you want it to go. Take your template, put it there, and then you would cut exact because the template's the right size to what's, uh, what's gonna fit you. So that's how you do the bodice. How you do the sleeves, you take your sleeve template, remember this is one sheet, so you wanna fold your fabric, the this, this same, whatever direction you want your stripes or whatever pattern to go in. See like for instance, this little shirt that I'm wearing, I wanted the um, swirly swirly things to go down. I didn't want it to go across, and I wanted the sleeves to be the same way, so I paid attention to that. Let my thing go. Everything keeps falling. So then you come here. See, that's using too much fabric right there. So you wanna like fold it smaller. You wanna waste your fabric, all right? So come this way. One more little fold here. Watch this. They always waste a lot of your cloth to put their advertising on it. Put that off, all right? So then you wanna come here right on the fold. That's why this is called fold. So you wanna put this on the fold. You pin it and you go zoo, 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 zoo. And then you're gonna have something that looks like this. Joshua's gonna follow me. So let me show you what we're doing today. And I'm not gonna do this one by hand. Joe's gonna sew this on the sewing machine. And we'll show all of that, but I, I wanted you guys to see how we cut it, all right? So the sleeve that I just did, this is, this is what it looks like. Let me open it up for you. I had them pinned together so I wouldn't lose them because I did this last night. So this is what the sleeve looks like. Looks weird, right? Looks weird for a sleeve, right? So you want to fold it where the two pretty sides are kissing each other because we're going to sew. And we don't want to get ahead of ourselves right now. But this part, so this is all this blouse needs. The front, the back, the two sleeves, and a piece of three quarter inch to one inch elastic to put through here. All right, so I have the elastic. I always have the elastic. And Joe's gonna take out the sewing machine and he's gonna start sewing up these sides. Zoop, zoop. Then we're gonna sew the sleeves, attach them, and I'm getting ahead of myself, guys. Let me get Joe to get this sewing machine out. All Joe has to do is sew up the sides of the bodice. This white part that you're seeing right here is where the manufacturers put their logo on the fabric. And I don't waste any type of fabric, so I still cut it, but I have Joe sew behind it so that we don't see it on the other side. So the other side's done. And his seam allowance is at about half inch. So this is the sleeve. Well, there are two sleeves. And I already have them pinned the way they're supposed to be sewn. But I want to show you guys what they look like when they're opened up, all right? So let's see. They look kind of like the bodice of the shirt, but a smaller version. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. So you fold it the long way where the two um, pretty sides are touching each other. And then I'm going to pin it again because this allows Joe to sew it more easily because we're not professionals. So he's going to sew here on both sleeves, all right? Here he goes. Joe's really good at sewing straight lines. I'm not even good at touching the machine. That's why I always sew on hand. So here's the other sleeve. He's taking his time to make sure it's correct, guys. We don't want to rip. Let's see what it's looking like. Now, it looks big, but don't panic because remember we have to have uh, elastic in the top part all right so let's flip it over to the wrong side so we could go ahead and iron out the seams when you're sewing i found that when you're sewing you need to iron a whole lot so i see some people do finger press but i'm not good with that at all i need a steam iron they do sell a thimble that's a thermal type thimble that will protect you from getting burned when you're doing these seam ironing but I haven't bought one yet because I've been pretty lucky where I've, I've not gotten burned. Watch me get burned today, right? So we just want to iron out the seam. And this is for the bodice. We need to do it for the sleeves also. So let me go ahead and flip this back over on the right side because to attach the sleeves, we're going to need for the bodice and the sleeves to be um, on the right sides, on the right hand side. 
So let me go ahead and just iron out the seam for the sleeves. The sleeve look kind of weird, right? I guess the sleeves look this way because of the way they attach to the bodice. So let me go ahead and iron out my seams here and be careful that I don't get burned. And then we're going to attach. So this is the left, this is the right armhole. And we need to go ahead and open up the fabric. So if you notice, it's on the right side, right? The blouse is on the right side. And it's going to look like a U, well, two U's. Joe didn't finish off his stitching here, so that's not going to work. I have to have him go ahead and do some back stitching for me, or else it's going to give me a difficult time to attach the sleeve. So it's just a minor hiccup, and this will happen all the time in sewing. You're going to have to rip. You're going to have to go back and sew again. So now, let's see how we add on the sleeves. First one first. So open it up and see the weird shape here because the straight edge on the bottom is uh, down on your lower arm. So seam to seam, this is why we were ironing open the seams. The seam of the sleeve and the seam of the bodice on one side and just take a pin and pin it. Let me get this in here. Now I get stabbed a lot with the pins. I don't get burned with the iron but I get stabbed a lot with the pins. And you just want to go ahead and work the fabric around so that the edges kind of match up and just keep pinning. Now normally when we first started doing these tops I would sit down and base stitch this in for Joe after I pin it but he's getting better now at sewing it so I don't need to base stitch this one. So just work the other side. Don't worry if you come up a little bit short on fabric when you're lining up the sleeve to the bodice because I'll show you what we'll do to correct that issue all right because sometimes I, I do cut a little bit bigger than I'm anticipating. So here it's all pinned and now I have to pass it over to Joe and give it to him the right way so he can go ahead and sew it. You see how simple this is right guys and this is not stretch fabric so you don't need like a ball a ball point or a ball tip type needle just a regular, ne a regular needle will do. I'm speeding up for you guys. So see, one sleeve is on. Let's do the other one. And pretty much we're going to do the same thing again. Just go ahead and line up seam to seam. Pin it. And then pin all the way around. And then we pass it to the tailor, Joe. So he can go ahead and sew it. And now I'm at the kitchen counter to show you. See, this top part's too long because the top part has to be flush with the sleeves. So I'm the one that cut it bad, right? I'm the one that has to take the fall for this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it so it can be flush with the sleeves. And remember, Joe and I just learned to do these tops a few months ago. You know, but we're getting better and better as we go along. So now what I have to do is go ahead and bend the top so we could put the elastic in. So the elastic is one inch wide, so we want to go one and a quarter. But first I have to bend like an eighth and then the one and a quarter. And measure, okay, because you're going to think you're eyeballing it correctly and you won't. And then you're going to run into problems where the elastic won't go through because you went too small. It does give a little bit of trouble when you're going around the sleeves because the sleeves are round. But just take your time with it. Don't worry about anything that's gathering because you're going to have a few puckers, but the elastic is going to hide all of that. So that's my elastic. So now what I'm going to do is base stitch this because there is no way Joe's going to be able to sew this, especially around the armholes. So base stitching, single thread, and you could just go in and out and pull. But if you do that over and over again for big projects, you're going to get froze, frozen shoulders and all type of mess. So just go in, out, in, out, in, out like this, several takes and then pull. And I don't need to base stitch the sleeves or the bottom hem because uh, it's not really a, um, a tricky spot like the sleeves, all right? So all I'm going to do for that is bend an iron so Joe can sew it a little bit more easily. So I do a lot of basting. So this is the neck that I'm ironing right here, or the shoulders I should say. Now this is the sleeve, just bend it a little, an eighth, and then maybe another eighth, and iron. Let me show you a different angle. See right here? You don't want some big hems for the sleeve. And for the tail end of it, well the bottom end of the blouse, 
you want to go a little bit bigger so I would say go like a quarter of a fold and then another quarter maybe even a half and, and I'm talking about inches of course iron it around and then just so so this shirt is almost done let's take a look at the elastic wrap the elastic around your shoulders and clip it like this so you can have some play for you to sew now Joan never leaves me a spot for me to string the elastic so I have to go undo a spot right here with the ripper just big enough to get the elastic in just get a big pin and stick it through the elastic and this is how we're gonna thread it uh, through the shirt so just go on in take your time with it all right stop and pull make sure the elastic is not twisting in there and just keep tugging at it to go along until you get it all the way through to the opposite end and then sew it like this on top of each other like this I hand sewed this because sometimes the machine can't do all of that so Joe's just doing he's closing up the gap remember he didn't leave me a hole now he has to close up the hole So, and this shirt is almost done because he already did um, the bottom part. So now he's doing the sleeve. He took off the utility tray from the sewing machine and he's just sewing around and around the sleeve. It's done. What do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? I will try this on tomorrow morning because it got dark while we're doing this stuff right here. So I'll see you in the morning with my new shirt on. I'm so glad that I waited for the next day to show you guys this beautiful top because it is so gorgeous in all this sunlight. Take a look at it. Now this is supposed to be a loose fitting top, right? But it's a little bit too loose for me because I probably have lost some more weight. So I'm going to have to take my template in. Let me turn around. It's longer than the ones I've made before because I want to wear this one with pants. Now come in close, see? I'm wearing a bra so you don't have to go braless or strapless with this it is so perfect where this thing rests right here make this elastic all comfy you can wear a brooch right here to embellish the top I wore a necklace once with it and I didn't like the way it looks so I just wear dangly earrings now all right now if you want to show off your figure go ahead and put on a belt who's there to stop you right so this is one of these big thick elastic belt belts with the big oversized buckle look mm-hmm mm-hmm oh suki suki now <laughs> i'm too sexy for my own shirt huh <laughs> anyways i love these tops i know i'm gonna have to stop wearing them when the weather gets cold but you know what this is california this is september i can wear these right through the thanksgiving let me show you my collection and stay to the end of the video because you're gonna see um a lookbook I think that's what the kids are calling it, right? A lookbook. Whatever. You're going to see some pictures with me wearing each and every one of these tops. So this was my first one. You guys remember when I made this one from some material that Shanika brought here, right? That's one. It's kind of short. So I'm making them longer and longer. This is my second one. And I get all this fabric right here from Walmart. This is what they call, I guess, calico. I don't know the name. It's mostly cotton. See another one right here. That's three. And I'm showing you them in sequence of how I made them. This is number four. I love this one. I wore this one in my cookbook, by the way. I wore this one and this one in the cookbook. Gorgeous, right? Now, as far as fabric goes, I think I only needed two yards. I keep buying two and a half yards and then I have a lot left over. I have that much left over that I showed you guys early on in the video. So two yards for a size 14 person is more than enough. Look at this one. This is the one I love the best because I did something fancy with it with the sleeves and I did something fancy because I ran out of fabric. But I like how light this fabric is and the eyelets and everything. It looks so summery. And uh, this is like my all time fave right here. And I wish that I could find some more light fabric like this. This one is super short because like I said, I ran out of fabric, see? Not too long at all. But you can wear this with a pencil skirt. Now, when it's super short, you won't be able to belt it because you won't have enough under the belt to make it look good, all right? So just keep that in mind. But take a look again, this is number seven. Um, now, let me know if you guys want to see me do one by hand. You know how Joe did this on the machine? And this one I did by hand. I didn't really show you guys that I was doing this by hand. I just talked about it at the vlog. Let me know if you want me to do one by hand and I'll go get fabric, anything to get another one, of course. But it's for you, it's for you guys. I'll go get fabric and I'll cut it 
and I'll just sit there on the couch and just show you how I backstitch this whole baby right here and sew this by hand. So this is 100,000% couture, all right? So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I don't know if this is going to be a regular, regular thing here at the site. I'm sure I can show you guys how we make the wraparound skirt with the um, slit for Jada because we're really good at that too. Um, I have... I can make like a full circle skirt and a half circle skirt and all this is based on what I've learned from um, Monica at Comic Cat Creations. She has a long sleeve blouse with a cage thing here that I'm going to try real soon with some type of knit fabric and I'm just going to do, why? Why now dogs? I'm just going to do um, what makes me look good, what flatters me and once I get good at it I can come back here and put it as a sewing tutorial but I don't really want this channel to be about sewing. I want it to be about the vlogs, the reviews, and of course, Joe's, Joe's stuff, Country Joe, all right? So check this out too at my Facebook platform. I have another version of the video there. And uh, go follow my Facebook page, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.